There's a lot of different versions of mermaids and they are existing now. Yeah. My hair was red in most of my lifetimes as a mermaid. I had a lot of beautiful lifetimes in Lemuria. The level of unconditional love that was present is not really something that I can quantify in human English words. I also had beautiful lifetimes in Atlantis. I had two big portals. What I did is I would move whole fleets of ships from one to the other. I would move planets. I would sometimes move galaxies. And that was my role. If you look at my tattoo, Choose when I'm channeling people who have vision activated will see this they just become portals of light so there's just light that comes in and out of my arms of my back and this one is quite a powerful gateway that I have as well so they're literally all gateways Hello everyone, in this episode we have the amazing Altia Lucrezia Avanzo with us and Altia, as you will get to know, is a light language channeler. She is a galactic contactee, Akashic and psychic healer, Reiki practitioner, Kundalini yoga teacher, astrologer, and she operates through the integration of her multidimensional self, as you will get to know through this. And welcome Altia and thank you so much for being here in this eternal now moment. Thank you so much for having me. It is honestly all my pleasure to have you today. And I would like to say, first of all, thank you for all of the great work that you've been doing for helping humanity ascend and raising the consciousness of the planet. Um, so on the behalf of everyone, I truly want to sincerely thank you for doing all of the work that you are doing. And for more clarity, could you provide some insight on what um, a grid is, what grid work is, what energy grids are, and maybe how many grids there are? For sure, yeah. That's a good question. Um, people tend to ask a lot about grids and grid work. So for me, from my understanding is there is no correct way to do grid work. There is no one way. They're like, they're, you know, everything is multidimensional. So it's grid work. Um, so let's just say for, uh, you know, the, the understanding of the concept that there's, okay, a planetary grid. So there's a grid of the earth, there's, you know, a galactic grid, um, there's grid in certain areas and in certain locations. All the grid is, is basically like energetic points and energetic lines. So then there's ley lines of the earth, which are part of the grid system as well. And what happens is a lot of the times these grids have been dormant. So they, it's kind of like they're there, but they're asleep. So what happens is they tend to activate with, you know, um, celestial, um, like alignments, planetary alignments, um, when there's specific like numerology or numbers, when a lot of people come into a specific place to do a meditation um, or with intention, with love, you can go and perform a ritual at a certain place to activate a ley line, to activate part of a grid. You can even, I mean, you can, it can be as easy as you carrying your frequency walking through a forest and activating a grid within there so um obviously if it's done with intention it is you know more powerful but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way so my process really varies and depends sometimes I get called to specific areas to do work like one of the biggest grids that I cleared was a beach in Mozambique I cleared yeah so this also you can do you can clear grids from um karmic timeline that is kind of like out of balance. So you could neutralize it in order for the frequency to uh, go back to a neutral space that can help and assist the evolution of the consciousness on a planetary level. So let's say that a specific beach, this is the one that I cleared two years ago, um, was carrying a lot of low vibrational frequency and ancient energy of a mermaid massacre that happened there of about, I think, three to 500 mermaids. Um, and I was taken there to clear that energetically. Um, so I didn't know why I had to go to that specific place until I got there. And only halfway through my ritual, they were like, this is what you're clearing. You had a lifetime here. There were people there that I knew who were also uh, present within that lifetime. So that's a very clear example of how I operate and do grid work sometimes. I mean, when I was in New York, it was just as easy as me walking through Central Park and I was clearing and activating things around me. So again, it's different for everyone. I hope this brings a little bit of light and clarity to what it can be, but it's a very vast concept. Oh, wow. That's absolutely beautiful. And just for the viewers, even when a person is raising their frequency and just for example, sitting while meditating, that's is that, that's raising the grid as well, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's so beautiful. every simple action. 
Yeah, so just this is and I recently I actually posted this today and it's like you don't um you don't shift you know by telling people what to do like you you shift you assist in shifting them by leading for by example. That's true. That's true and I feel like you are a perfect example of that too. Like you preach what you practice. Um, and moving into the second question, so you went to the U.S. after 10 years this year, and you also performed some grid work there and Conscious Life Expo and all of that good stuff. So how was that um, going to the States after 10 years? So it was very interesting. I'm actually going back in two weeks again. Oh, wow. Um, so Los Angeles, I hadn't been since I was a child, but I have to say, like, I really enjoyed the grid in L.A. I thought it was very beautiful quite light. I slept really well. Um, I was very well rested. I, yeah, I found like maybe because there's the ocean, the beach, I found a very, a lot of clean, clean. I found it quite clean, I must say. Um, but when I anchored into Manhattan, that was a very different story. So 10 years ago, I lived in New York. Uh, no, actually, it's now maybe like 11 or 12 years ago um and at the time I didn't have the conscious awareness and understanding that I have now of how you know the frequency works and the collective and the ascension and the planet and the healing and all of that so um I wasn't perhaps as aware with the awareness that I have now being there I found it very dense so those are the two places that I visited. I was in LA and then I was in New York. Personally, like that was the main thing that I found. With regards to the grid of the States as a whole, I didn't really assess it just because I was doing a lot of work already in the places where I was present. Um, but when I'm going back this time, I'm doing LA and San Diego. So I'm going to get a feel for the San Diego grid and see what is going on that side as well. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely beautiful. And you also mentioned that you had a past life as a mermaid before. Could you explain what that was like? And are mermaids in the 3D now? Okay. I've had a few different ones. Um, I wasn't always the nicest of mermaids. <laughs> I highly um, doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had lifetimes where... so. There's a lot of different versions of mermaids um, and they are existing now, yes. I mean, listen, everything is happening all at the same time. If you access the quantum, there is no limit of time and space. So there are timelines where they are here on Earth as well. They are some of them here in the 3D as well. Um, so for me, okay, my hair was red in most of my lifetimes as a mermaid. Um, I was actually massacred in more than one. This is the one that I would then went to clear. But I also um, lured men and killed them in in a, in a lifetime as a mermaid as well. So there was that. And it was and it was part of the natural kind of like selection, kind of like how a lion would kill its prey sort of thing. Um, I did have to do some work on 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 clearing that, but it was more from a sacral perspective, um, from a, a feminine masculine balance perspective than anything else. It wasn't like, oh, you were a murderess. It was it was just how things were at the time. So it was in alignment with the evolutionary process and um, expansion of life, if it makes sense. That makes sense for sure. And you've also had past lives in Atlantis and Lemuria. So how was that like? And if you could explain what really led to the downfall of Atlantis and Lemuria. So for the downfall of Lemuria, I wasn't there. I was there before. Um, and I had a lot of beautiful lifetimes in Lemuria. A lot of really, really profound soul changing experiences there like that's the, it's the level of unconditional love that was present within the existence of the souls in Lemuria is not really something that I can quantify in you know human English words yeah. <laughs> if it makes sense um there's a very good book called the Lemurian way that's a very good example of how life was in Lemuria <laughs> um and then okay so I had a few different lifetimes in Atlantis um I was there for one of the kind of like falls and the one that I saw specifically I downloaded this memory it was I remember it was 2019 at the time and 
I, it's also on my Instagram. I drew it and I, what I, I cried for about three hours when this came through and it was the first memory I got from Atlantis. Yeah. And the drawing that I did, which I saw was, so these volcanoes erupting, erupting fire, all these people running and these machines coming down from the sky and these machines on the ground that looked like like the best way I can describe them as huge spiders, but they weren't spiders. It was like a square box and like these like magnetic legs around them. So the best thing was like a spider, but they weren't really spiders. And these things were like, like shooting laser beams and killing people. And yeah, so, so that was, that was one of the most traumatic ones that I had to clear. I also had beautiful lifetimes in Atlantis. I worked as um, I don't, I don't want to say a timekeeper because it wasn't really a timekeeper, but I worked within this, um, this quantum like room, if you can call it. And I had two big portals, uh, or, or, or black holes, wormholes, call them what, whatever, like, and there was one on the left, one on the right. And what I did is I would move whole fleets of ships from one to the other. I would move planets. I would sometimes move galaxies. And that was my role there. I worked with crystals. Um, I worked, I had also like family and friends and things like that, but my main lifetime where I channel Atlantean codes is from this, um, this, this, this understanding and this, this work and this lifetime where I did all this work with, with these time constructs and this transport. And if you look at a lot of my first drawings, like I, I mean, I have here on my wall, um, it's mainly kind of like, kind of like I drew like refuel stations and like quantum leaping areas and like all these spaceships coming and going sort of thing. So that was my role. And I was charged with keeping kind of like order and peace to an extent, but also like logistical moving, you know, if it makes sense. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. And I read in a book that they were able to save around 25,000 Lemurian souls. And they now reside in Mount Shasta in the inner earth. The frequency there, as you mentioned, is very high of unconditional love and high frequencies. And um, so yesterday was June 3rd, the sixth planet alignment so could you explain energetically what if it created a shift or anything of that sort so with me it's quite interesting because I do have an astrology background but it's not my main focus I mean I could if I wanted to like I did a lot of that in the past but um <laughs> I was actually told by someone last week they were like hey you know that this is happening in juice third and I was like oh okay like I wasn't aware so it's quite interesting because the information will generally come to me um, in one way or another, but I don't really go look for it. And sometimes I'll be like, okay, like I feel weird today. What's happening? And then there'll be like some planetary shift or something that's happening. So um, it's funny because yesterday I had been divinely guided to take the day off, which I did, and actually receive some energy healing from a colleague, which is what ended up happening. So I took the morning, I went to gym, um, I saw my colleague in the afternoon. So, um, and I don't really take Mondays off, like it's Monday, like I'm <laughs> gonna work. Like I don't really take a random Monday off, but that day I was divinely guided to do so. So for sure, the astral was very active. That's what I picked up. There was a lot going on in the astral space. Um, I felt very energetic personally, like very energized, very like efficient, productive, even if I did take the day off, but it felt like, yeah, there was a lot of navigating and happening and opening up. Remember guys, when there's these alignments, like these portals, these, you know, 11, 11, 12, 12, 2, 2, 3, 3, whatever, it's about you. It's what you make of it. So you are the amplifier, you know, the, the, the portal brings in a frequency, you know, and you can choose to operate to navigate with it, or you can choose to ignore it, or you can choose to, you know, move on. But just know that to some extent it will affect you, but it will generally give you what you need at that moment in time. Um, so I think you can follow these guidelines of, you know, the planet does this and that does that and this opens and that expands, yes. But we are all individual souls navigating, you know, different realities and timelines. So no one knows better than you what you need. So my advice is to just set your intention for the highest alignment when you wake up in the morning, sit in gratitude and say to whatever planet is around, you know, 
whatever is needed for me at this moment in time, you know, allowing for it to come through. So I, I hope this, this answers your question. <laughs> no, that's absolutely beautiful because in reality, we have access to the eternal now moment and that solves everything so um, that's definitely very insightful and so you work a lot with Arcturian technology as you mentioned so what kind of technology is that you've done your homework well eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So um, generally the true technology will come through when I'm channeling. So it will be almost like the clicky, the sounds sometimes. Okay. So I use a lot of technology when I'm channeling within my workshops, which is not really generally how I channel publicly or on platforms, just because the frequency of specific sounds and technology is so high that it actually can't like the, the tech is not going to pick it up. Like, so that's what I've learned from that. Um, so it for whatever is needed, healing, heart opening, sacral clearing, releasing emotions, recalibration, balancing, attuning, expanding, new energies coming in. So um, whatever is needed. And I do find that with the Ecturian technology is generally like a violet, a purple, sometimes a dark, dark blue. Um, so that's kind of like the race spectrum that it comes through with. Um, but yeah, not not necessarily, but that that would be one of the main technologies. And that combined with the Atlantean technology also comes through in my written codes. But the 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 main kind of like sound frequency tech that comes through, I will channel in my workshops. So like I did at the Conscious Life Expo and um, in, yeah, not really so much in the stuff that I post um, online and in my social media. For sure. And I was wondering if you're aware of the Escalia mirror that's near Alaska. It was set up by the Arcturians. So it, I was just made aware of this yesterday that near Alaska. Uh, E-S-C-A-L-I-A. So it's like a magnifier. If a person wants to send a healing to a specific place or a person as an individual we can only send so much healing although that's super powerful but when we send it to the escalia mirror it magnifies it by one million times so that's even more powerful i was just made aware of that yesterday and i i, I sent light to it to send light to myself to raise my energy and i couldn't sleep for four hours at night wonderful i'll definitely um, have a look look it up yeah Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Of course. And um, so you have a flower of life tattoo and you were also a little bit into sacred geometry. Could you explain from your perspective what the significance of the flower of life symbol is? Okay. So again, this is everything, including the geometry is what you choose to attuned to okay so for me the geometry works as an amplifier it just amplifies my frequency and literally if you look at my tattoos when I'm channeling people who have vision activated will see this they just become portals of light so there's just light that comes in and out of my arms of my back and um of of my tattoos so this one is quite a powerful gateway that I have as well so they're literally all gateways so that's that's how the flower of life works for me um, I really try to stay away to attach like symbology or symbolism or identity to any specific shape or form, because again, everything is multidimensional. If to me, the flower, it, I mean, the flower of life, humanity, or, you know, the name was attributed to it. And, you know, but every, I mean, if you look at the universe and if you look at the light language and if you look at the codes and if you look how everything is done, everything is geometry. So to an extent, all geometry is making life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'm not a physicist. I'm not a mathematician. All my knowledge comes from what I have channeled within my own experience. So I try to stay away um, from things that deal in absolutes, like it is this or it is that it, it is what you want it to be. We live in a reality while well, we operating in a reality or want to be operating in a reality that is fluid. So, um, you know, so that's kind of like how I see it. 
um, like my flower of life is tattooed with the rainbow spectrum because the rainbow spectrum is in alignment with the frequency that I carry and that I work with. For someone else, um, they might want the flower of life blue because blue is water and water is one of the elements and from water that comes life. And that's how they see it. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's very versatile in my opinion. Definitely. And um, it's also said that once we upgrade our 12 strand DNA, it will sort of take shape of the flower of life or it will mimic the flower of life. Although it is said that we have flower of life like imprinted on our whole body in a way because that's like creation happens in the image of that. So that's absolutely beautiful how you explained it too, that different things convey different messages to different people. That's for sure really true because there's no truth really. It's just about different perspectives and it just depends what consciousness or what dimension sort of you're seeing things from. If you were to say, let's say, where are we in terms of open extraterrestrial contact so disclosure has obviously been happening on an individual level for like i don't know i don't want to say centuries but more like millennia like yeah <laughs> we've been here you know mm -hmm. um i do believe we will see full disclosure within our lifetime um what i understand is that there needs to be a certain percentage of humanity that needs to be consciously aware and have integrated the concept that ET beings exist for that to happen, if it makes sense. But also like, I mean, there's so much activity happening already anyway. Um, yes. It's very difficult. There's a lot to say because there's so many different timelines that are shifting all the time. So my advice would be on individual level, if you want to see a UFO, if you want to see beings, just ask. And I always give this example because this happened to me a few years ago. It was like maybe 2021. And I was like, I was already doing this work and I was channeling and I was doing like language and I was working online and everything. And I was like, okay, guys, like, and I had seen UFOs and I had experiences, but it'd be like maybe a year and a half or, or maybe even longer, maybe two, two years that I hadn't really seen anything. And I was like, I mean, I was seeing in the astral and with my third eye and I was, you know, operating on a multidimensional level, but not in the physical. And I was like, guys, can, like, you know, like, I mean, I'm working and doing all this and just send me like UFO, like a small yeah. something, you know, I just, I haven't seen something in a while. And I was asking and asking for like maybe months. This was like, yeah, this was like 2021, maybe towards the end of the year. And then I just kind of left it and I was like, okay, whatever. And then I remember this very clearly. This was like April of 2022 and I was standing outside my veranda and I was there because my parents had left that weekend I, I don't know there was a specific alignment of things I wouldn't have been outside at that time I would have usually been inside having dinner but I was home alone so I decided to like go outside and look at the sky and whatever and finally enough I was with my partner at the time and I said to him um look there's and he's like there's something there and he's like yeah like it's a plane I'm like no this thing is zigzagging and it's got green and orange and like blue lights I'm like this is definitely not a plane so then I went closer and it, it, it was a UFO it was like a small gray ship but maybe carried like I don't know two five ten beings it, it and it was close and I live on top of a valley so um I could see it very clear and it was zigzagging across the valley this thing was alone and then it went on and disappeared behind the trees and then when I tuned in they were like well you asked us and <laughs> We sent you, you know, but they only sent yeah. to me when I released the attachment to wanting to know when yeah. it was the last thing in my mind, because then I had a neutral frequency to it. So my advice to anyone who wants to see beings like, yeah, just ask, don't have too much attachment to it. But if that's what you want, then you, you're an infinite being of light that co-creates its reality. So that's your reality. You want to create it, go for it. Absolutely. And there's a possibility that your neighbors may not have seen it because you are operating on a different timeline, on a different reality. So everything's taking place all at once. But there's a possibility that only you and only you sort of saw it and not your neighbors and stuff like that. That's absolutely that's beautiful. Good, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really good point because I mean, I live like I stay on like a it's like a farm. So the neighbors, maybe they sort of like, but they like super far. But mm -hmm. that's a really good point. Um, and sometimes they only want you to see them and not yeah. anyone else. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that 
also be it, you know, that you're in their timeline and whatnot. For me, it's interesting because I see through cloaking devices. So when they are outside behind clouds or even in like, I'll be able to see it because my vision is activated. So now like I see a lot of them all the time. Um, but at the time back then, I could see, but not as well as I can see now through through the cloaking device. But if you look in the sky, I mean, like there's always something going on. Definitely. And so what are some things that a person can do to open their third eye? Anything that you recommend? Yes, learn to ground first. That's important, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, everyone comes to me and they're like oh like I can't see my third eye is blocked no so what happens is the energy flows in the toroidal field so from the bottom up so uh, root sacral solar plexus heart third third eye crown okay if your lower chakras are out of balance you're not clearing your emotions you're not in this in your power you're not grounded your energy is not going to get to your third eye so you're going to struggle accessing here okay so my advice would be work on the lower ones 99% of the people that come to me that say the third eye is blocked, it's not. It's the lower chakras. I mean, I don't think anyone really has their third eye blocked. Like there's very rare cases of pre-contracted agreements that people have that then they come to me and then I release them. There's usually it's like these helmets that they put on themselves, but it's very seldom. Like I've worked on thousands of people. I've seen maybe like four or five that have something like that. But in general, no one's third eye is blocked. Like I don't even believe this thing with like fluoride and things like I don't think it's true. I literally think it's like a, a myth that has been put around because people's third eyes aren't blocked. They just not operating properly in the lower ones so the energy isn't reaching you know the the higher chakras um and then sometimes what happens is when they struggle with the heart center the energy sometimes can bypass the heart and it can get up to the third eye and that's when there is illusion and distortion so my advice would be to work on the grounding once that's mastered reasonably work on the heart center no one is perfect so you don't have to be you know the perfect person or the perfect human you know we all having this human experience but if you want to be psychic master the grounding first for sure I feel like um for a lot of psychic people it's like up and above is really easy but like the chakras starting from here and down are the ones that need the most work uh I'm also speaking for myself so it's like for our physical health if we are not feeling the best if let's say we get a blood test done and our iron levels are low that's a parameter that we know that okay I need to take care of my iron but if we are not standing in our power if we are sort of having intrusive thoughts if we are not confident if we are experiencing low emotions a lot that's a sign that we need to work on our lower chakras definitely and we should take it as much seriously as taking physical um treatment seriously because that is just a result of energy yeah 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 totally mm -hmm. yeah yeah and exactly as you said like my personal experience like because I'm so much up here all day every day and so much I need to work on grounding more than your average person the masculine energy is de is is generally more grounded than what would be your feminine energy because your feminine kind of like opens up and channels and whatnot but um yeah again like if you want to work on you know getting messages and your clear senses and your psychic abilities everyone is psychic everyone can be psychic everyone can do what I do what you do like we're not special like everyone can learn like it's literally like a sport the more you play it the better you get at it um you know I just I'm just good at it because I do it all day every day but literally like anyone can be psychic anyone can channel information anyone can connect to their higher selves um but it's really really important yeah to to bring the focus and attention on the lower chakras as well definitely and in your activations you mentioned uh, you call upon the archangelic collective with uh, Michael to the south, Uriel to the north, Raphael to the east, Gabriel to the west, and Archangel Metatron. Uh, could you explain the significance of why certain um, archangels in certain directions? Yeah, they, it's just a gridding procedure. They basically okay, just okay. grid in that way. Yeah, so Metatron will, you know, connect from above to the soul star with his blue cloak, create protection, and Sandalphon will seal the grid from below. Um, okay. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't really know where. It, comes from um i know that the four 
Arc Angelics, I have worked with the four elements as well. Um, it's the four pillars of the earth, the four corners of the earth, the four elements, the four angels. Um, it just, yeah, it just works very well for me. So that's how I will generally do my gridding whenever I do some light language or channel, or do some energy work. And it's funny that you say that because this one day, I think this was last year. Yeah, last year I walked into a restaurant that I often go to and I, and I walked to the back and I sat down with someone that, that, yeah, like a friend of mine and someone that I didn't know at all came up to me. This was a psychic woman and she looks at me and she said, you just walked in with like a whole gridded team around you. She's like, oh, wow. you <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. And people oh, can also fun. call upon them just by requesting and just sending the intent out, correct? So yes. um, when you work with a client, you work with their Akashic records and all of that stuff. So uh, what does Akashic records look like? And how do you sort of retrieve information from that? And how does a person end up healing from that? Okay, so I mean, I have a whole masterclass on this on channeling and the Akashic records um, available on my website, if anyone is interested to like for like more detail, but so the records will, so the way I understand the records is that they are beyond even the 5D, even the dimensional densities as we see them now. For me, the records also contain the universal records, which is the information from other universes. So where, you know, like the, you know, the, the, the laws are different from ours and things like that, which is like a concept, which is like, you know, very beyond what we can conceptualize, you know, at this moment in time, but the best way to understand them is like, you know, people say like a library or things like that. The way that I work with the records is I don't personally go in them. I don't think, in my opinion, anyone personally goes into them. You connect either to your higher version of self or to kind of like these Templars that hold the, the, the information within the records. Because imagine now you have like billions of souls all going into the records at the same time. Like that's going to be messy. Um, do you know what I mean? So... And the way that I work with them is I'll ask specific questions and then I'll get answers in certain ways. And then what that does is I'll bring the knowledge to my client and say, okay, you're struggling with your throat because you were strangled in a previous lifetime. So now you can send love to yourself to that lifetime and move forward and clear it. Having knowledge of the lifetime itself is already halfway there, if not sometimes a whole way there to neutralizing it and clearing it. Um, so just assist in bringing clarity. Again, I'm just a channel. I'm just a messenger. The healing is done within the individual. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's a very powerful tool to understand why sometimes there are uh, blockages or imbalances. It helps in understanding karmic cords, ties, and connections to family members, loved ones, um, you know, and things like that. And you know, sometimes it brings clarity as to, okay, why do I really, really want this person to heal, even if they are not part of my life anymore? Well, maybe they were your son in a previous lifetime or your daughter, you know? So I do find that the knowledge does tend to bring clarity. Um, the records hold everything, even like the positive, beautiful memories. Generally, when people come to me for healing, I don't really retrieve those because they're very nice memories. They like, they come, you know, to clear what 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 they're not aware of um so sometimes when you let's say die in a way that's violent you can experience soul fragmentation which means that a part of your soul kind of like gets taken away which doesn't mean that you're not whole you're very whole and complete in this lifetime it's very important for people to understand that but as you navigate through this human experience and you start doing more of your own healing, you start doing something called soul fragmentary collection where these parts of your soul come back to you. As you integrate them, you start integrating more parts of your multidimensional self and you start operating from this multidimensionality and activating more of your psychic gifts. So becoming more psychic, being more present, working in the astral, um, uh, being able to speak more your truth, whatever it is, you know, so it's a very beautiful space where you can, yeah, where you can, you know, heal. And I just noticed that my cat is, can you see my cat? Yeah. 
but he's, he's he's he he actually came in before we started and yeah he knows you're talking about him and um yeah these are, the animals are great take hey? cats especially they 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 do a lot of really good work in the astral space but yeah i think i hope that gives a little bit of clarity on the akashic records and how i understand them definitely definitely and before we move into your light language activation, I wanted to ask you, how can a person quantum leap into their highest version or a higher version of themselves? So make sure that your thoughts, actions, emotions, and words are all in alignment. So a lot, so much comes from the throat because if you are saying something and doing it, you're in your truth. This heart and throat connection is so important because you can be very grounded, but if you're not speaking your truth and you're not listening to your heart, then you're not going to get very far. So you th thoughts, actions, emotions, and words. So you saying something, you're doing it. If someone asks you to do something and you don't really want to be doing it, like you have a job that you hate and you don't want to go there every single day and do it, you're not really living in your truth. So it's going to be harder for you to raise your frequency, you'll be in a space where you are operating, you know, from that quantum realm and co-creating your reality. So my advice would be to those who are in that situation to shift your perception and perspective of the job, to see the positive, to be grateful, to, you know, wake up and say, wow, I actually have a job and I can offer you know, um, financial stability, or I have a roof over my head, or I have a really nice colleague that I see every morning. Uh, do you know what I mean? Try and shift the perspective and perception of it. So I think, yeah, probably the, the, the most practical advice would be that, you know, to make sure your thoughts, actions, emotions, and words are all in alignment, and you are living unapologetically in your truth. And remember, guys, if you say something, and whoever you're saying it to, takes it personally and they say, oh, you're making me upset. No, I'm not making you anything. I'm not in control of your emotions. You're in control of your emotions. I'm only in control of my own actions, words, emotions, and thoughts. You can't control other people. Obviously, you don't have to go around offending and being rude, but if you're speaking from your truth and it's from the heart, and because we've grown up in you know, a society where people pleasing is the norm, especially for women, like when a woman speaks her mind or when someone's actually like, no, this is not in alignment with who I am or where I want to go. You know, people are like, oh, but, you know, I expected this. It's not your job to live up to anyone else's expectation. You're your own individual. You're your own human being. You make your own decisions, you know. So really important. And if you're struggling to understand how to do this and if you want something or not, go to the body. Go to the somatic. The body will know. Does it feel weird? Do you feel nauseated? Do you feel constricted? It's a big no. Does it feel light? Does it feel happy? You know, and my advice again for people who really struggle with these boundaries is understanding that boundaries are the highest form of self-love and boundaries and empathy without boundaries is self-destruction, but rather over put them, put really high boundaries and then take them down slowly because going from low boundaries to like a healthy boundaries is a lot harder than going from low boundaries to really high boundaries and then slowly taking them down. So that's kind of like how I like to teach it. Definitely. I feel like I I immediately activated like a whole new boundary, as you said that, like moving down from the up, maybe instead of just like trying your best to build a boundary from the low, definitely. And um, is there any message that you may have uh, before we move into the light language activation? Um, I think I'll see what comes through as I channel now and we'll see For sure. you know, what, what comes up. And if there's anything, there'll probably be a collective message. Generally, when I do these system clearings, it'll be like a throw to sacral or solar plexus. But let's see, okay? For sure. Sounds great. Okay, so you can close your eyes and start anchoring into the body as you find your comfortable breathing rhythm. With every inhale, you breathe in light. And with every exhale, you release all that doesn't serve you anymore. If you also channel, you're more than welcome to open it. Eh? As I call on the Archangelic Collective, Michael to the south, Uriel to the north, Raphael to the east, and Gabriel to the west, we call on Archangel Metatron with his blue cloak of protection from above, and sign off on to seal the grid from below. As we call on our higher selves, our spirit guides, anyone else who wishes to be present for the greatest and highest good, you're welcome in the space. Nayo, <laughs> 
Opening, 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 opening systems. Raya, 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 Opening, 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 expanding, 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 tuning, expanding, tuning, expanding, tuning, 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 opening, opening, cleaning, releasing, 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 letting go, 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 removing, removing, decoding, detangling, 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 expanding, 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 more light, divine rays, anchoring, 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 anchoring into systems. Raya, 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 Tiana ri aki aki are a she sasoro atietaka. Trea kiero kukat crea se o sietakai. Taya karaya ishe yataka. Traya kiarea ke sheko se saraya shera yata. Triana tre akieto koai si. Opening, opening, opening. Opening, yo, 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 tuning, 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 expanding, 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 clean, releasing, 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 removing, removing, removing any. Blockages, old energies, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. shame, guilt, anger, fear, resentment, clean, releasing, releasing, releasing grief, expanding, expanding into heart center. Or rays, rainbow rays, coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, anchoring, 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 yo, 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 activating blueprint, activating new structures, new templates, opening, opening, anchoring, 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 5D codes, templates, anchoring, attuning, anchoring, attuning, 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 attuning. A tuning, a tuning, a tuning, a tuning, a tuning, a tuning, grounding, 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 anchoring, grounding, anchoring, anchoring, grounding, anchoring, 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 raya, 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 ra, pahia, shesa, sa, to kua itia, rea te krek, kura, kria, sia, to kuna, ya, che, ya, ta, oro, ishe, na, ya, ta, rea, tre, a, tre, o, kuka, tre, a, sie, su, kura, ya, tre, a, tie, ta, ka, Ria te ro 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 ra ni te aishe yataka shone ara kuru 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 ia sira isting in love sing in compassion opening 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 two more light divine rays angelic rays yo 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 Christ and what light here shut the hara he say 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 aishe yataka ta he aishe she kohani ta aishe aishe yataka tria ta tria tre uma aishe se uma aishe Uma i sieta ra, na rea kur o trea sieta ka, ora ia i shie ka, kuru kutkara i sieta niata ka, niara tre, a kiero kua i shie ya na, ora i shie sa i sieta ka. As we ground into these codes, ye tokoro i shie anchoring new templates into our structures, we let go of all that doesn't serve us anymore. We clear, release, ground, balance, align, remove, anything that we're holding on from our field. Expanding into light, divine rays. Clean, releasing, releasing. Team peripheral, clean, releasing, 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 letting go, 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 Ceiling closing, 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 systems, closing, systems, closing, surroundings, closing, anchoring, rounding, 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 rounding. As we gently come back to the body, ground back into the physical vessel. Into the now and the present moment. How are you feeling? I was going to say my forehead is hot as if I released a whole bunch of energy. I can feel like a whole tingling here. And it was like just releasing and releasing and releasing. And I've been listening to your and participating in your activations from your other 
podcast episodes as well and I would like to say that that has made such a big change just yesterday and the day before that my thinking was so much more clear it was so clear no negative thoughts and I was getting a lot of negative thoughts before that no negative thoughts at all so I want to thank you so much for doing this Thank you. Thank you so much. I just got goosebumps. Thank you for that. You know, it's quite funny that you say that because um, when I did some channeling at the Conscious Life Expo, it was quite funny. I was sitting next to you. I don't know if you know Elizabeth April. Yeah. And she was just saying, she was just saying that she um, she's very visual. So she was just like, yeah, like you went in and you were like taking all these things out and opening people's systems and then sealing them and closing them back in. So that's generally, yeah. And sometimes people will feel like they'll see like vortexes of energy. Um, so everyone's different, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And that's why I said to you, do you channel light language? I don't channel light language, but I do channel my spirit guides and angels. I really would love to channel light language. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. to me, like, yeah, I mean, I see you channeling. That's why I said if you channel light language, you welcome to open channel as well, because I see you, like, I thought you channeled already light language. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't see why you 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 wouldn't, like, that's how I felt. So, yeah, wonderful. So I look forward to you. To, yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure and I just want to thank you so much for doing this and just before we leave if you could uh, quickly explain how um, you bend time and stretch time um, because I feel like that will be super helpful for the viewers yes sure. yeah before I explain that though I just want to mention to everyone who's listening that I have a few spots available for my Costa Rica retreat that's happening in November. So um, yeah, there's a few slots. It's going to be really powerful. It's going to be uh, six days, five nights in Costa Rica, San Jose, Serapiqui. We're going to be doing a lot of light language. We're going to be working with the elementals and the dragons as well. So yeah, I look forward to see who is going to be there. I've got a few spaces. So and I'll prop like it'll sell out. Um, so like rather sooner than later. And then I'm gonna be in LA very soon. I'm gonna be at Disclosure Fest. I'll be holding a workshop there. Then I'm holding my own workshop on the 28th, also in LA. And then the 7 7, which is the 7th July, I'm gonna be in San Diego for the Starseed Conference. Um, so tickets for all of that stuff is available on my website. The Starseed Conference is in person, but also tickets online will be available as well. And yeah, I've still got, if you go on my website, my six month program, six week program, um, my Kashi Clearing, my light language, everything that we mentioned, but I'm sure there'll be all my links below. Um, so yeah, so time. Okay. So I actually have a workshop on this as well. So I don't know if you saw that, but I have, yeah, I've got a workshop um, on time and the power of numbers. It's quite a vast concept, but I will explain to it briefly. So with your intention, you can slow down time or you can speed up time. So I'll give you an example. You have to get somewhere and you need to be there by quarter past eight. It takes you 10 minutes to get there. You leave at 10 past eight. You can literally, with your intention and your power, slow down time and like literally like quantum jump and time loop and get there in five minutes instead of 10 so that you are on time. So there's a lot of things that keep you stuck in time. Um, routine, detrimental routine will keep you stuck in time. So like watching the news, big like, I don't know, what's it called? Like sport events and things like that. They keep you stuck in that timeline. So my advice would be like, you can have a, you can have a watch, but don't get stuck. Mix it up. You wake up in the morning, like coffee is another big one. I personally don't drink coffee, but oh, people wake up. Oh, I need my coffee in the morning. You don't need anything. Drink tea, drink coffee at 4 p.m. Okay, maybe it keeps awake at 12 instead of the, you know, mix it up so that you're not stuck in the same timeline. You're not stuck in, 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 you know, in a in a perpetual loop. Um, so so yeah, so I mean, in my time control methods workshop, I do have a lot of ways that I explain how to navigate this. Oh, I see you clearing, eh? You're still yawning. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's good yeah for whoever hears this um the codes are intelligent they'll integrate in the best possible way but you can be clearing burping gagging yawning um just give it you know a little bit of time to settle you might feel like you need to rest or you might you know um sleep a little bit more you might feel irritable for like a day or two just know you're processing and releasing and clearing for sure. Thank you so much for this. And for a lot of people, abundance is what is one of their most um, things that they struggle with. And what is something that you recommend for that? 
Boundaries. Abundance goes hand in hand with boundaries. If your boundaries aren't solid, you can't hold energetic container of abundance. So you're going to have leakages and you're going to struggle to anchor into an abundant life. Again, I have a workshop for this as well, guys, on my website. So on abundance um, and how to also anchor into abundance within your spiritual business. So if you're struggling to, you know, be abundant and get clients and be financially free, then, you know, that's a good one for you to choose. But in like a nutshell, I would say boundaries is one of the biggest one where people struggle. For sure. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say that it has been a very uplifting and elevating conscious wise, this whole conversation. So I really want to thank you for that. 